Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Welcome to RugbyM. The sign behind me tells you exactly where we are. The former iconic ground of Hull FC. We're not there, obviously. We're down at the training base of Hull FC as we focus this week on away days. Hull FC travel to Leeds Rhinos as a prequel to the Challenge Cup semi-final coming up at the end of the month. We've got an action-packed show. Lee Radford, hard as bills, his five toughest opponents. We've got Gazellis, the legend, 1-13, to 13, a teammate is, is epic, featuring Liam Watts and Scott Taylor in part two as well. Please stay tuned, the great Yorkshire show. Easily the best family day I've been to with my kids, and yep, I'm chasing a pig around a ring. Not to be missed, I was actually stitched up. You'll see it all unfold in part two. Right now, let's go inside to the training base and meet the gaffer and talk to Lee Radford how he prepares for a game like the Leeds Rhinos. Mate, this season, good season or bad season so far? Um, all right, all right, yeah, we're you not know, great without, without, you know, sorry, good without being great, I think. Um, you know, I'd love us to start picking up our performances um, going into a semi-final, obviously, and, you know, the eights, um, you know, we, we didn't perform well in the eights last season, so that's, you know, something we'll, we'll address um, prior to, obviously, them fixtures being made available. But, um, yeah, obviously, this, this week coming and, and the week after, leading into a semi, it's, it's important not to limp into them games, I think. Semi-final, you know, if, if you do get there, you've gone the hard route because Cass have, have just been phenomenal and you, you've seen him off. Leeds are really your bogey team. How, how do you actually come to cope with your bogey team? At? Because they beat you. Last year, they couldn't buy a win, and they beat you twice. Yeah, and, you know, beat us convincingly Smoked twice. Smoked you this but, year as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they're a difficult team to play against. They're, they're, I, honestly, I, I find them a difficult team to preview against because, um, you know, with certain teams, you, you can fathom out where they're going to go in, in, in certain areas of the field, and you can... Have an idea of what's then going to come at you with, with Leeds. It's um, very ad lib and it's very off the cuff, and it's uh, you know when they don't know what's going to happen, it's, it's hard for anybody else to preview that, and you'll try and find out what happens. Albert Kelly's probably been Starman for the team. He's won at Starman in Super League. He, he's been brilliant. Do you think he's in that mix for Man of Steel with potentially Luke Gale? And you mentioned Joel Moon as well uh, for Man of Steel um, potentially. Yeah, I don't know. I, look, I, you know, I'm done that. I think they'll give it to Luke Gill yesterday, you know. They, yeah, they've they been talking uh, about it, haven't they? Cracker, yeah, and, you know, there's still so long to go until um, the end of the season. And like I said, the trophy <laughs> hasn't been picked up yet. So, but that's, you know, that's what pundits do. They've got to put the money on somebody. And I think, um, you know, if I was a gambling man, I'd put my mortgage on him. But, but the one you just mentioned there, Joel Moon, I think has been phenomenal for, for, for Leeds. I really do. I think um, the transition from centre to half has been... Um, you know, breath of fresh air for Leeds, and I'm really f fearful of playing against him this week. I, you know, I hope he has an off day, but no, really, really talented boy. Um, I'm going to give a choice now. Guaranteed grand final appearance. Could be against Leeds, could be against Cass, could be against Wigan, could even be against Saints, because I think they're the dark horses, me, St. Helens with Barber coming in. Or guaranteed winning Challenge Cup final. What would you have? Would you pick the win now, Challenge Cup final, or... The chance to win the grand final. Grand final. Would you really? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I um, you know, never been done with this club. Got there in in Nantes. Never been winning at Wembley. Six, yeah, and you know, and we tick that box off. So, um, no, the GF is the, you know, it's Mecca. That's um, I well, had the best Mad Mondays on, on the planet. Don't we about <laughs> that? They are, um, you know, whereas the Challenge Cup, you don't you don't get a chance to appreciate it as much as as you should do. Um, but yeah, you know, to, to swan off into into the off season is, with a ring on your finger as a champion is, is special. Can I ask you as well, from from obviously playing in these games and being around the successful clubs, would you play the World Club Challenge after the Grand Final as like a mega super game, rather than the next year when it's sometimes a completely different team? It's it's a real awkward one because it's not really a true representation of those champions. Yeah, it's a funny one, and um, 
Yeah, it actually happened in 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 uh, or six. So I'd left Bradford in in um, or five. Obviously, winning the grand final, and then went to watch them play against the West Tigers, um, which they they won against, obviously. But um, it's a difficult one because you, you know yourself. Come the end of the season, there's usually a test match, or yeah, yeah. some that's you know some elements of the squad are going into some camp. So you, at the same time, you don't want to dilute the quality of the competition as well. So. Um, yeah, it's, I quite like. I quite like. You know, I was lucky enough to play in one, and all pre-season was focused around that game, and it was uh, it was a real special occasion. And um, no, I quite, I'd keep it as is. My name's Gareth Ellis. This is my one to thirteen, the best players that I've ever pl played alongside. Fullback, I've uh, been lucky enough to play with some great fullbacks. Um, in particular, James Tedesco, he was just coming through um, as I left West Tigers. Uh, but the, the player that I've, I'm going with is Brent Webb. Um, he was elusive, he was a great, he was a, one of the few fullbacks at the time that could pass um, and brought that sort of uh, extra standoff to your game. So, number one, Brent Webb. Number two, uh, a big fella. Unfortunately, his career was cut short by injury, but he was absolutely massive for us um, at, at West Tigers, and that's Taniela Tuiaki. Number three uh, would have to be the grumpiest man I've ever played alongside also, and that would be Keith Senior. Uh, just so destructive. Um, just a, a, the perfect centre, really. I, lucky enough to play with him at Leeds and uh, international level, um, and certainly someone who you were glad to have alongside you. In the other centre, uh, another lad from West Tigers, uh, the ultimate professional, um, did everything right. Um, was only young while I was at West Tigers, but he had an older head on his shoulders. Um, a speed to burn. Uh, he's now playing his trade in the back row, but back then in the centre, he was absolutely massive for us, and that's Chris Lawrence. Um, on the other wing, number five, um, I'd have to go, I've, again, this has been a tough position to pick, uh, but I'd have to go Ryan Hall. Um, he just the way he came through, you know, one minute he was playing playing Alton Raiders, next minute he was starring for Leeds Rhinos, and not long after that uh, with England. Uh, absolutely mountain of a man, uh, does all the hard yards in the backfield, but one of the best finishers in the world. Number six, probably the best player that I've I've played with um, and against. He's phenomenal, uh, made me feel really welcome at West Tigers off the field, but he's the way he played the game, it's, it, it's exceptional and it's what every kid wanted to be and that's Benji Marshall. Number seven, um, a really good friend of mine um, and again, someone who's, who will be remembered forever, particularly throughout the Super League era. Um, back when I played with him at Leeds, he was this try-scoring machine um, and, and his try-scoring record is absolutely phenomenal. Um, he's adapted his game recently, he's a bit more, you know, his pass selection is unbelievable, his kicking game is absolutely exquisite, um, and that's Danny Maguire. In the front row, I'll, I'd have to go, again, uh, probably the best forward I've ever played with, uh, Jamie Peacock, just tough, uncompromising, and his best quality was the fact that you just had to look at him in the dressing room and you knew you had to play well for that man. Um, it, yeah, the best player, along with Benji Marshall, that I've ever played with. Number nine, um, there's a close call this one. Um, again, West Tigers, Robbie Farah, really skillful. Massive, massive player for us at West Tigers when we had a few good years back there. But the man I've gone with, um, who I've you know, played alongside with most recently and um, come up with some massive, massive defensive efforts, um, none more so than that, that one tackle, uh, well, one of 50-odd you know, in the uh, Challenge Cup final, Danny Outham. The other front, front rower, uh, another uncompromising player, um, you know, a legendary player, uh, both on this side of the uh, this side of the world and in Australia. Um, he's, he's, you know, his his legacy will lives on, you know, in both sides of the world. He was the first name that people spoke about while I was in Australia, and that's Adrian Morley. Moving on to the back row, um, obviously the position I played most of my career, um, but another West Tigers player, um, Chris Arrington. Just, just a workhorse, absolute workhorse, um, and, and again, someone who really helped me settle in while I was at West Tigers, became a really good friend of mine, um, but his, his skill level, his, his work ethic was, was, was unsecond to none, the, the type of player that you want to play, get, uh, play with week in, week out. The other second rower, um, a player I played against um, in Australia, 
Um, and then a few years ago, he came over to Hull um, and he's been absolutely massive for us. His professionalism, his work rate, um, his destructiveness when he, uh, in, when he carries the ball is, uh, is a massive asset for Hull FC at the moment. And that's Mark Minicello. Uh, loose forward, in my opinion, the best player to, to put, particularly in the Super League area. He was absolutely phenomenal for five or six years when he was at St. Helens. Lucky enough to play with him for Great Britain and England. Um, had everything. All-round player, um, skill with the ball, tough, um, and a great bloke off the field. Really helped me, me uh, adapt to sort of life in the international scene. And that's Paul Schoolthorpe. That was Gareth Ellis, and that was my 1-13. to Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Welcome back to part two here at Rugby M. And I'm really excited to be here because yesterday I did a recce around the Great York Yorkshire show with my family and it was the most amazing family day out. I'm joined today by a Rugby League family and we're all here together. There's quite a few of us come down. James Donaldson, our resident farmer. Uh, you must be wet as an otter's pocket to be here, mate. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, you know what, what it's got in store for us today. Um, so come across my girlfriend and excited uh, just to see what's going on around the place. There's a good buzz uh, already, um, so I'm looking forward to a good day out. Mate, you're going to be shearing a sheep today. Are you nervous? Are you excited? What's what's your feeling of it? Well, I'm pretty nervous to be fair. It's a long time since I've even tried to shear a sheep, uh, but you know it's going to be a bit of fun, and obviously I think it'll be a bit of laugh for you. It's going to be a great day right now, Yorkshire Show. Let's get over to Hives and Honey and see Nick Scruton. We're outside Hives and Honey, and I've got. A really excited professional rugby player in Nick Scruton, ex Wakefield, now Hull KR with Dono. And uh, I'm also joined by Greg Sharp, professional beekeeper. Scruton, see what we're looking at here. Is it, where, where's the honey, mate? Show me the honey. Uh, well, it's just a bit of an observation out of this one. Um, so we've got some nectar here that's not being sealed up yet. And then it's more of your honey super. So they'll, they'll move honey up into here eventually and then seal it all up. And then it's ready for consumption. So, Greg, do the bees actually carry the honey up? Is that how it works? Yeah. Yeah, that's how they do it. They bring it in, they process it, and then they move it up into the into the top frame. And uh, Scoops is, is being a bit modest. He's saying he's a he's an amateur in in, in in comparison to you being 14 years beekeeping. What have you got from being a beekeeper? What has it given you added to your life? And everything. It's brilliant. You know, you you can't find a better hobby. And and Scoops, you were telling me as well before, a bit pretty passionately, that bees are endangered now. Um, yeah, well, there's stuff all over the press at the minute. If uh, if there were no bees, then we'd have about three, four years to live, and then the world would be doomed. So we're just doing this bit, aren't we, to uh, sure, save yeah, the world, yes. mate? Yeah. yeah. No biggie, no biggie. No biggie. <laughs> We've got two superheroes here saving the world one bit at a time. Right now, we're going to link over because Jonesy joined you at the Hives. How did Jonesy do uh, on, his on his first debut beekeeping? Jonesy were mad for it, no sign of Wagger. <laughs> Wagger were an absolute no-show, very quick to pull out of that one. But yeah, Jonesy loved it. He said uh, all along, right from when he found out that I were keeping bees, that he'd love to tag along one day. And uh, yeah, he took to it really well. I've always had a bit of a goal, Scroots, to keep chickens, goats and bees for the honey, for the milk and for the eggs. Fresh daily produce. And this is my first experience of having a go with the beehives. They're sounding a bit angry, a bit buzzy. I'm a bit worried because I've never done it before. We're kitted up. I think I've got a Ghostbusters costume. Uh, Scroots has got the, the full stuff, but Scroots, just check us through the process, particularly with this like can of, of smoke here. What's that for? Yeah, well, the smoke, uh, it just keeps the bees calm. It can calm them down, so you make sure they're well smoked. Yeah, I think it goes back to like an instinct in them with it. They sense like kind of a bushfire sort of thing, right. so they all run back into the hives, gorge on the honey, and yeah. it can just settle them. So if the bees are just getting a, getting away from you a little bit, we just blast them with a bit of smoke, and it can just uh, just keep on top of it. So that's really all we've got in there. So we smoke uh, the um, the things to smoke with, uh, a couple of tools just to mani manipulate the hive and things like that. Right, and how many jars of honey do you typically get out of a decent hive a week? Um, you, you take two crops of honey off, so you've got one a spring uh, crop now where 
uh, beekeepers have been probably this last week or two taking a spring crop off and then you sum, summer run it which you take off in about September time right um, and it just depends on the hive how productive they are each hive, each hive is different um, but yeah you can be looking to get a few boxes of honey which is three four hundred jars per per colony sometimes I do for me and when you come down to do your weekly check what is it you're looking for um, well a bit of everything so just make sure that everything's all right that not hives aren't falling over just basic beekeeping basically like hive husbandry and then um, we do swarm control right so we need to make sure that the hives aren't going to swarm and if they are then we need to um, produce like an artificial swarm so you need to trick the bee the queen bee into thinking that she swarmed without actually leaving the hive so right. that's where it gets a bit technical i thought jones did really well down at the hives mate but we're inside now this behind us is all the show honey mm. um you're gonna enter next year uh, yeah, I'm going to have a crack, why not? Uh, I've managed to get my first three boxes of honey um, a couple of weeks back now, so hopefully i get a summer crop as well and yeah, have a crack next year, see what I can do. And what are you going to call your honey? got a name for it yet? Uh, yeah, I'm well, clueless um, at stuff like that, so I asked my little boy, I thought, well, try and get a kid's perspective on this, and uh, I said, George, what, what would you call it? Like, what do you do with honey? And he says, you drizzle it. So drizzle. Said, drizzle, yeah, I like that. Nice. So, yeah, we've got the Drizzle Honey Company. The Drizzle Honey Company. Thanks to George. The Drizzle Honey Company could be repping next year, but what would it mean to you to win at the Yorkshire Show? Uh, well, yeah, if I can make honey that's good enough to win anything, then I'd be chuffed, but to win at Yorkshire Show would be class, wouldn't it? So, yeah, that's 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 the dream, Alex. The dream, the dream, mm. mate. Best of luck with the Drizzle Honey Company. Keep us posted, and we will get Wagger over to the bees, mate. Yeah, we'll see. It's uh, called a hog because it's only one year old right now as we speak, as it's shorn, it becomes a year old. The lovely swirl ale hogs here have been provided from the farmers, sent from the Yorkshire moors. He's looking a bit nervous, uh, look at me Go on, no, no, no. Oh, a double cut. When I say a double cut, that means he's gliding up into the wool. He's looking very, very nervous there. <laughs> Oh, oh he hasn't come very well allergy. prepared, has he? He's covered his white pumps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my. No. We're oh, dancing. We're, the... we're dancing. <laughs> we're dancing. James, I thought you had some go power. On, this I'm... is Hull's powerhouse at the very best. <laughs> Look Here at them goes. arms. Look at them arms, ladies. <laughs> Can I hear you scream and shout to him? Cheer go him on. on. Go on, go on, go on. Go on. We're shearing the sheep. Go on, Donald. What do you think now? <laughs> do you is, this, think is this the money? Is this the money? This Jim? is the money. Bit. This is the money. He likes the money. Bit, does our James? Go on, don't you? Is it is it easy, James? Yeah, right. oh, he said it's all right. He's not bothered. He's quite happy there. Oh, he's a natural now. Look, ladies and gentlemen, one-handed. A farmer's son from Cumbria. There we go, give her a big oh, round of applause. Oh, oh, oh. Give it up for James. Go oh, down the hole. Down the portal down there, she goes. Go on, come down with it. Now, <laughs> would, would you rather have a game of rugby or shear a full sheep? To be honest, I think I'm going to get used to she shearing these sheep, to be fair. Oh, he's very confident. Very, very That's confident. That's well, standing here from the Ox show. I've got to go to a woman and his pig. Let's get over there to the pig arena and Donald's the well. Give me a cheer, everybody! <laughs> I've been roped into it. I'm a little bit scared. You, you did so well with the sheep, Donald. Uh, but it was thrashing around. Did it scare you a little bit? Um, I was a bit rattled a little bit, to be fair. I didn't expect it to be so badly behaved, but um, I think we pulled it back together and ended up getting it in the end. Mate, these pigs look scary. They're actually running. Pigs are running. I never thought they'd run. Uh, we need to find out what we're doing right now. We're going to bring in the main man. He's going to come in and tell us all about what we're doing today. What's your name, mate? My name's Barry Turner. Barry boys and Turner. girls, boys and girls, nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> tell us a little bit about this uh, pig agility, Barry, please. Pig agility. Well, pig agility is a little bit of a version, that the, the one man and his dog thing that we used to do with sheep. Probably people have seen it on television where the dogs go, put them through the paces. Well, this is all about handling the pigs. It's not about the pigs, it's about handling the pigs. I've handled one or two pigs. Don't know, you've had a few pigs oh, in your one or two, yeah. One or two. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's leave what Barry's got to offer as he goes around the course. All right, thank you. <laughs> Alex, I don't want you picking it up and carrying it round, right? You've got to do it with a pig in the board, so the experienced handler will come round with you, all right, and try and keep you right. Okay, I'll hand you over. There's Alex. You take your pig to Alex. If I'm the 
fairly quicker than feet, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, but I don't think he's going to break the world record of about 1 minute 38 seconds to get round the complete course, is he? Jamie's coming up fast behind with a middle white look there under expert tuition. Oh, look at that. I'm glad Alex can't see what's happening behind him, are you? <laughs> First thing I'm doing when I get home is having a bacon sandwich, and that is for sure. I got completely set up there, Donna. I got a whole like pig. What kind of pig were it? I think it was a bit angry, really. An angry pig, yeah. It, it definitely me, angry pig. It did nearly uh, try and bite me before it even started, <laughs> to be fair. But yeah, definitely a tight one, it? Mate, you, uh, you're taking the spoils today as our resident farmer. You've cheered a sheet, you've won the pig competition. You must be happy, mate. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy, yeah. Hang on. Like I said to you, you know, I haven't really sheared a sheep for a long time, so just even to have a go to get, you know, it's definitely good fun. Mate, I'm dying. I'm going to go get a cider. I'll catch you later on. More coming up in part three of the show. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Scott Taylor, uh, number eight, play front row. I'm nicknamed Tag. Liam Watts, front row, aka Big Judders. Jano, oh, uh, I say it's probably Stevie Michaels as well. He's yeah, not, Stevie. Um, <laughs> he's not. He's, he's weird in a good way though, because he's just he's just off his head mad, and anyone who's met him will. Oh no, that Dr. Michaels is a bit of a weirdo. Just like Wonders Ride, don't say much, then he'll just like come out with a bit of Tourette's, they'll just go, get us! <laughs> and just start flicking stuff. <laughs> in, my, in my travel group, it's uh, Danny out 100%. It's his testimonial, richest man in club, and he never brings his wallet out with him because he doesn't need it. Everyone yeah. buys him a coffee and that, so. In my travel group, Danny Alton, but Chris Reed. Yeah, well, I travel with Greeny, so like me and Tom will be buying each other coffees and that. We try and get Greeny one and to get us buy us one back, and he's like, "Nah, I don't want to drink, lads. <laughs> you get your own." <laughs> Judders. <Jodos. laughs> <laughs> I just do it on purpose. On yeah. Radders off. <laughs> and then he always says it's the kids. Yeah, I had kids. I had kids. <laughs> <laughs> Go get a card, oh, Radders, I had kids, come on, man, don't be like that. Neither of us too, that is a fact. I'd, I'd, say, um, I'd say probably Gaz, yeah, he can, he can chip I'm somewhere. I'm stood there like with 20s on either side and Gaz has like got 50s on Warming the up, <laughs> warming, warming up. up. I'm like, Gaz, I'm at my max here, <laughs> <laughs> chill out. Yeah. My, I'd reckon my is up there. My, oh, I, like I said in there, I'd say probably Washy again, me. Where we call him Ank because um, it's like a different bloke. He's uh, one bloke with the misses and then he comes out with the boys and Ank's out, so my, he's allowed uh, out. <laughs> my head, um, I think his testimonial last year and Feckers. Um, Feckers testimonial. They all had like um, topless waiting in anyway. And my missus made him wear <laughs> a waistcoat. <laughs> Anyway, like after three beers, it were off and there were people dancing around him and that were going, you definitely going to get divorced in the morning. <laughs> giving lap dances out with the towels and all that. And not allowed out now. Rubbing oil and he said he's not allowed out now. <laughs> I 
Griff, Griff's pretty um, up oh, there. With yeah, Griff fashion, dresses isn't? every day like he's off on a night out. Yeah, yeah he's, he's definitely smart. yeah, he's definitely up to summer every day, yeah. dressing like he's like West. He'll definitely be after be Wash he'll dresses like a dad every day. Tomo wears six oh. pound Primark vest. Tomo looks like he's <laughs> off to bed every time he finishes training, gets ready and. Uh, Stevie Michaels wears drawstring pants Tom as well. Tom got the same shirt in five different colours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just get Big on well, mate. Like, stop getting jealous. Nah, I'd probably say Shawley the most. And he, yeah, we Shawley. Always, rather than getting married on weekend and Shawley's best man, so it'd have to be Shawley, I'd say. <laughs> Calls him his dad. <laughs> I like Chris May, I got, but I like that Montana as well. Oh, I like uh, 100% maybe. Dr. Marcel, me all the way. Oh, I absolutely love Marcel. Marcel. Marcel and Gabby. And he even got the app and a vote for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to buy one Gay. of the water bottles. I want to get me in our last one in water bottles. Oh. <laughs> Hashtag With blessed. Tagled on. Hashtag blessed on his. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Marcel. Bowden, Bowden, big time. Yeah, he's, he's on the single scene, he's Bowden. Went to uh, races last Saturday and a woman come up to him and recognised him off Plenty of Fish, genuinely. <laughs> went, you're on Puff Art, yeah? And he was like, I used to be, I used to be. <laughs> Got real fussy in front of all the boys. So, <laughs> Bowden's single and he's the biggest sleaze. Sliding in DMs, he got every dating app out there. Yeah, see. <laughs> so you don't say that, no, he just grips you. Yeah. Serial killer. Yeah, he's a serial killer. He's a Can't speak to him about it. <laughs> just, he just does this very right awkward yeah. smile where you just like look at him, he's like, yeah, you know. And he like you gives know. you the nod, <laughs> and you're yeah. like, sorry, see. He don't drink, just on night out, he just sat there supping coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Allen's doing it minute because of his yeah, testimony. Yeah. He's begging everybody. Yeah. Sure loves Sneed his one. boots and that. He's like, oh, I'll get a thousand quid for these, Sneedy. Yeah. It's like taking everybody's boots from training without them knowing yeah. and getting them signed. Oh, there's a few of the... We all have a decent nick, don't we? Yeah, a few of the boys too, yeah. Hey, once when um, not, Mad Monday a couple of years back went to Blackpool and um, we all went fancy racing and Gaz were there and seen Gaz at like four in the morning knocking Techno Viking yeah, out. We're like, it? that's the boy there, Gaz. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, every time you mention it now, he just like goes bright red. Yeah, when well, it's time, he'll stay out, won't he? But no, there's a few, the few of the boys stay out to the death, but... The Islanders love a drink. Tools is the man. I'd it, say Shawley as well, because he he's could a drink punish. for two days solid, and not even know he's had a drink. Yeah, it'd be Tools just... or Shawley probably as well, yeah. Yeah, Shawley's a little Charlie's pest, a punish, though. Yeah. Definitely not me, so I'm out. No. <laughs> for that reason, Skip, I'm out. Skip would be up there. Yeah, Skip's up there, yeah. Skip's very long. Um, Sneed is in there as well. Shawley has a dig for a midget. <laughs> he? He's all right. It's hundred percent not washy or fashy. Yeah, fashy. <laughs> just, just see. Call him free. Wow, I got length of time mate, in the shower. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I might say yeah. that. Oh yeah, I'm probably up there then. <laughs>
Bill, try to tag rugby, anyone can play. That's the beauty of the game. And back in 1990, you were approached to write the rules. Tell us a bit about that story, how it all came together. Yeah, the fellow who invented the game, Perry Haddock, just lived around the corner. Perry used to play for Illawarra Steelers, Cronulla and St George as a halfback back in the 80s. And he turned up and said, I've got this idea. It's confidential. Can you have a look at some rules? It's a new game. And I just said, OK, helped him write the rules, fixed them up. And then years later, they were playing it. So I got back involved with him in 98, and I've been with him ever since. And we've got this game now, 180-odd thousand players on our database. It's just massive back at home, right through New South Wales and Queensland. Is and it's, it? it's the non-tackling version of rugby league. So if you can't play rugby league, then you play tag, and it's the closest thing you'll get to playing rugby league. Mate, it's outstanding. And obviously from one extreme to the other, in your refereeing career, You've refereed 10 grand finals, 21 state of origin, and you did it when it were really tough. Tell us a bit about those days when you were refereeing origin, some of those some of those tussles. And, and did you have to mentally prepare yourself to, to ref at an origin more than even a grand final? Yeah, origin's three games every year. We know they're fast paced and they're probably the pinnacle of the year as far as the rugby league calendar goes. And so you did, you, when I was refereeing, I'd say to people when they'd ask me that question, I'd say, no, I prepared the same. It's just another game. Absolute rubbish. Yeah. It is the best. You prepared differently and you refereed the game differently. It was entertainment. It was a full on. And you know, you can't throw a punch these days. You get sim binned and all that sort of thing and they want the violence out of the game. But you just go back, rewind, and how good was it in the first couple of minutes? Both sides are getting stuck into it. I should just step back, let them go. When they all finished, said, right, we all finished. Now we'll play some footy. And they played footy and we got great games of footy. And I think everyone loved that, that era, even though we can't go back there now. But I think when you ask people, they say, oh, yeah, the softening up period in the first five minutes, how good was that? <laughs> Have we sanitised the game too much? Because it is a tough game, played by tough men. And let's face it, people like to see a bit of biff. They do. And if you go back a couple of years, the marketing campaign at the start of the season was all about the big hits, the shoulder charges, all that sort of thing. But I think in society today, and they've just got to take the big hits away and look at the player safety. So it's a different era. I miss it, but I understand why. Brilliant, mate. Phil, last little bit. If someone wants to get in touch and wants to play, try to tag rugby, give it a go as a sport, how do they do so? So we've got a website, uh, www.tritagrugby.com. Uh, all the details on there. We have a YouTube channel. So if you're not sure what tag rugby is about, you can get, go to our YouTube channel and watch some footage. But if you love your rugby league, it's the closest uh, sport to rugby league, just without the, the uh, tackling. Absolutely outstanding. I'm going to give it a go. We'll see you down there as well. That's Tri Tag Rugby. Big thanks to Bill and Mr. Philip Brown. Top stuff. Whether it's Power Station, Factory or Stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's Power Station, Factory or Stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Adders Bales, we called it Adders Bales because Bailey was the first person but anyway, we've had a few scrapes of bills over the years. And uh, we want, what we want is your five toughest players from five to one who you've played against to come throw them and, and really get in a mix. So who in your career have you played against to be your number five? Um, number five. At the time, I was on, I think when I played him, I think I was only 17. And um, I actually saw him last week. Still looks in really good shape as well. Um, He's scared a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely had <laughs> buff, you know, the old fighting butterflies. Eh? <laughs> Them going. No, it was um, Kelvin Skerritt, right, you know, playing. He was at Halifax at the time. Him and Carl Harrison was in the front row. That's got to be for a 17 year old yeah, kid. Yeah, that was. Um, I remember just <laughs> carrying it from a kickoff and getting bent by him, you know, literally. And um, really, you know. And as well, you, you know, I'd watched him growing up, obviously, you know, in his ear day at Wigan and, um, you know, to get. It was a real honour. <laughs> <laughs> Roy Dickinson said exactly the same about Jim Mills. He said yeah. he turned up to the building and said, like, I, I got punished by Jim Mills. That's <laughs> <laughs> one thing you, uh, you're proud of, isn't it? Yeah. Who <laughs> beat you number four? Um, number four, again, um, probably came came up against him as a, as a young kid, but um, unbelievable, big man. 
you know, really big man and, and gone on to have an unbelievable coaching career in, in rugby union. Um, we'll be Andy Farrell, just uh, hard work. Hard work, played tough, but really finesse as well with his skill. Um, and I just think it made him really, really difficult to um, to play against. Yeah, that, he was he was special player. Number three. Um, number three. I'm gonna say Joe Vangana. Yeah, yeah, Joe. just just a lump of a <laughs> just a lump of a man. You know, his biggest head in rugby league. Uh, <laughs> bigger uh, than Burgess. Bigger than Burgess is it? No, yeah, that's it's big. unbelievable, Swede. It was. Um, <laughs> it needed a foundation like that just to <laughs> just to hold it. I think. Um, but uh, but he was one of them. Joe. He was. He was a. He was an assassin. He was. He was such a gentleman off the field. But um, you know, if he dipped that right shoulder and, and, and got under your ribcage, like he had the ability to, you, you know, he was, um, yeah, he was wincing for your dad on the touchline for a while. <laughs> number two, mate. Um, number two, number two. I think Stewie Fielding was a was a real handful um, to come up against. Just a awkward man to tackle. Um, Awkward in training, just an aggressive, you know. What, 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 put it on you in training. Just as, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, you know, Nightmare. sometimes, yeah, it was, it was, um, I love Stuart, absolute bits, but he, he was, um, he was just an awkward man to, you know, just, team run uh, would be belting <laughs> blocks in team run, you know, just, uh, just the dumbest. We've got a game together the next day, and, <laughs> yeah, and he's, and he's, um, and he's, and he's belting you, and, you yeah, know, just that type of block, but, um, <clears throat> Yeah, I, th I think that at one stage he was he was special, well, you know, when he was running eight, 80 minutes for Great Britain against the Aussies and, um, you know, coming up against the likes of Shane Webke and, and some of those blokes and you know, not only old in his own, but in, in some cases outplaying him, he was, he was phenomenal still. And last but not least, mate, who is your number one toughest opponent, someone who, even to this day, you think, oh, if you got up for it, if you walk past him in supermarket, you have to brace yourself and get ready. Yeah, it was... Um, uh, not not in uh he played really tough but he was he was right on the edge all the time but he was i just never got to grips with him throughout my career how to defend him he's one of them you highlighted him you highlighted him you highlighted him. you knew what was coming but um you know stopping kieran cutting him in and around that that 10 meter line on yeah. the trial line was just you know you needed at least four or five players stood around you just just to give you hand and, and again you know he gave me a bit of an initiation um into super league when i made my debut for bradford and you know, still got the stud marks on there somewhere, <laughs> somewhere now as a, as a tattoo. So, um, no, he was really, he was a real handful of a player to play again. Big, thick, quick, um, with good feet and, and, and tough, just a tough man. I'm joined at Edinley post game by Brian McDermott. Brian, what do you reckon tonight's game, mate? Nothing. Mags, Magsy, what do you reckon tonight's game, mate? Jonesy, hey. Jonesy, what do you reckon tonight's game? Yeah, it was a great game, Wagga, but you want to be pitch side, mate, for post match. Sorry, mate. Overall, how, how are you finding uh, this season? Uh, yeah, yeah, good. Um, obviously, coming up from the 19s is, is tough. Um, it's very, very tough. Obviously, the, the game is so much, so much faster, and you just need to be a lot, a lot more fitter. But uh, obviously, with, with more games, I've I've uh, kind of caught, caught well with it. Who's you, been your, the main impact on your career so far? Who's took you under the wing from the first team, guys? Um, I'd probably say Danny Maguire has, has took me in very well. Um, helps me out with everything. If there if are any questions, he'll, he'll help me out. Um, yes, uh, and Jordan Baldwinson as well. Yeah, he's, he's been helping me out quite a bit. Already a firm favourite. Um, are you loving life at Leeds at the minute? Yeah, yeah, I love it at Leeds. Obviously, Leeds is a great club and... Uh, hopefully we can go on and win, win a bit of silverware. But um, for me, I'm just uh, just going to keep working hard and uh, obviously I can get this uh, these appearances in. Psychologically for them, I think they'll be, be a bit filthy. You know, they yeah. they probably felt a bit hard done by with some calls there. But um, and for us, uh, you know, we'll just keep working on what we're doing. We're not we don't think that guarantees us a win. That's for sure. We know that you know they're they're a good side and they'll be they'll be close to us in that Challenge Cup. I've just had a quick chat with Jack Walker. Great young talent. Where do you see his future? Hopefully, hopefully with us. He's um, mate. He's great. He's a he's a funny kid. He's good to have around the club, and um, he's only going to get better, isn't he? So, I'm not sure what he's thinking, but I'm sure he'll make the right decision. So, 
Um, he's, he's great to great to be in our side. He's, he's you know he won us a game with that special special thing he did there at the end. The errors we're making at the moment, the real basic, you know, I call them dollies. The dollies we're making at the moment um, are killing us. You know that that drop ball when you know nobody's within ten metres of you and the pass is going where it needs to be. Um, you know the lack of execution on just making that catch repetitively is, is killing us. And you know we spoke at half time about um, completing that thirty percent that we added. You know yeah. against you know red hot Leeds Rhinos, you, you don't get yourself a chance to win the game, unfortunately. And that was um, you know, that was the case tonight. Enjoyed by Hull FC, Matt Minicello. Um, just speaking to Radders there, obviously uh, tough loss, too many errors again, costly. He says he's going back to basics this week. What do you reckon to uh, obviously disappointing uh, to get beat? Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, you know, quality side leads are, and um, you can't give them simple errors out of our own end and, and expect to win the game. So, you know, we gave them far too much uh, ball. Um, you know, and we had to defend our line. And you know, I thought defensively we were quite good tonight. Um, you know, but you, it, it, it gasses you when you give them that much ball and you, you're doing that much defence. So, you know, I thought we come home strong, and um, you know, we were, uh, phys physically we were, you know quite fresh score towards the back end but like I said Leeds held on well and deserved their victory tonight. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. UK Red Fire and Security Fan Cam. As you can see over my shoulder, high security. Guns, they've got everything out after last time. So I've got to behave tonight. Who who impressed you out of tonight? I, you must be you must be over the moon with a win, obviously, against Hull FC. Going into the Challenge Cup, plenty of confidence. Yeah, I think Walker played really well. Yeah. I think he's had a, a great sort of season so far, yeah. He's been good. All he's out with. Louder, come on! All he's out with. All he's out with. Come on, join in! Hey, what do you know? I found some all FC fans. I thought I'd lost them all. Come on, boys. Right, what do you reckon tonight's loss? What went wrong? Nah, penalties, mate. Gifting them points. Leeds gave you nothing. We just gifted them too many points, didn't we? You mentioned that over the last couple of weeks. Uh, you're attacking games, let, letting yourselves down. Albert Kelly, big loss for you guys tonight. Oh, massive loss, mate. But Connor's good. Connor's good. He's creative, isn't he? He's skill skillful, isn't he? But, yeah, he missed that position, but... It is a big loss. He's a man that's constantly chasing the ball. He's always on his game. He's just constantly looking for that little chance that he's got. I'm joined. I'm joined by three very young Leeds Rhinos fans. What's yeah, your name? Knock, uh, Declan. Declan. Dylan. Dylan. Thomas. Who do you play for? Huntslet Parkside. Huntslet Parkside, but you cast Tiger at that. Huntslet Parkside. Huntslet Parkside. Right, tonight's win. Who, who impressed you out of the lads tonight for Leeds and Hull? Jack Walker, Jack you Walker. like Jack? Jack Walker. Does he inspire is you? Is he your hero? Yeah. Do you want to be like Jack Walker, play for Leeds Rhinos? Yeah. Right, tonight's game. Even though you're the Wakefield fan, right, are you happy with the Leeds win? Absolutely. Puts us in fourth, doesn't it? Are you guys down here to make sure I don't do, get any get loose tonight with the old FC and Leeds Rhinos fans? Absolutely. You're down here to look after me? Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks right. for joining us, lad. Oh, Cheers. Oh, 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 Come on, all! Come on, all! Right! Semi final! You finished! You finished! Never mind, Rugby League! Let's talk about how many, how many beers does this guy have tonight? How many? Oh, how are Oh, how are Oh, how are Oh, how are He's got me in the headlock! This guy! Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry.